there yarn lovers, it's Gary and I'm coming to you from my happy place, the Yarn Corner here on Vancouver Island in Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Tuesday, January the 25th, 2022 and this is video number 139. So how are you all doing? I hope you're well. I've got so much to jam pack into this episode that it's going to be a little bit of a mix match of different things. So I hope that you'll stick around and enjoy the content. I want to say welcome to any new people who have arrived for the very first time. I'm Gary and I've set up this channel to talk about all of my yarny adventures. That's in knitting, crocheting. I do dabble in a little bit of hand dyeing of yarn and I talk about my acquisitions where I buy my yarn from and the tools of my craft. So if that kind of thing is of your interest, please stick around. And to all the Fibre friends who have returned, I just want to say a huge thank you for all of those wonderful comments in the last video where I talk about, I'm still super excited and beside myself, uh, with the Hobie that I'm going to be reviewing in February. So Hobie reached out to me and they asked me to uh, review some of their yarn. So I've picked a few, not too many. I think I've got three different kind of like varieties that I'm going to be getting in February and I'm really looking forward to it. So I want to say thank you to all the congratulation comments that I got in the last in the last episode. So what have I got for you for this episode? I have some finished works, some works in progress. I do have some happy mail. I want to touch base on uh, things that have been going on in the community here. I did mention that I'm going to be unbagging some of the things, talking about a pattern that I'm intending to do, but I don't know when, somewhere later down in the year and choosing the yarn. So I want to, you know, get your thoughts on the yarn that I've picked, whether you see any pitfalls or maybe some suggestions or if you like the idea of uh, what I'm going to be doing with unbagging one of my project bags. So uh, I'd love to get your feedback. Yeah, so let's get started on the podcast and talk about finished objects. These two finished items that I'm going to showcase next are my entry to a crochet along that's happening for the year of 2022. It is hosted by Setta over at Setta's place. Hi Setta! And she's called it Setta's Calendar Cow 2022. Now each month of the year she's put together this calendar that will celebrate a artist in the fiber community and the first one is Setta. She's the month of January so I thought I want to jump in and do something to celebrate Setta. Now I have used the photograph that she's presented in a video and she talks about the rules. I'll add that to the description box below. So if you want to join in and uh, celebrate Seto along with all of us for the month of January, uh, then you'll be able to learn more about the crochet along. So I used the photograph for her color inspiration. She loves gray, she loves orange, she loves purple. And in the back there's this wonderful photograph of a winter wonderland setting of trees and snow. She's up in Alaska. So Seta, I hope this celebrates and your colour selection as well as represents a celebration of who you are as an artist. And here it is. I love this calendar, this uh, cowl so much. I used a pattern or a chart that's free and it's from Yarnspiration. It is called the baby, the mosaic baby blanket. Now this isn't the baby blanket. I had to do a little bit of tweaking to work it in the round instead of in the flat. So let me try it on so we can see how it looks when it's worn. Absolutely had so much fun making this pattern. Oh, now the free pattern that is included in the link down below in the description box, it is to a flat piece. So I had to alter it a little bit to work it in the round. Now, Mikey from the Crochet Crowd, he does a tutorial on the flat piece to the pattern and it is written in a uh, written formation as well as in a chart. Now I used both so that I could work out what, what I was doing and whether I was doing it correctly. I also watched Mikey's tutorial and I learned so much from that. I realized that I did a little bit of mosaic crochet back a while back, like maybe two years ago, and I made some mosaic bucket bags from uh, yarn and chai, and that was a lot of fun. I'll show you those in a moment, but 
I absolutely love this. It's a 10 stitch repeat. It worked up in the round and then I believe it's 12 rows to uh, finish the, the repeat of the O's as you work it up. So I had a lot of fun, big learn for me. If you're looking for that challenge, it's a great way of busting through some scrap stash that you have. And in this instance, I'm using a variegated as well as uh, some solid colors. And I absolutely love it. Love it, love it, love it. I have a question for crocheters out there who may have encountered uh, a solution to the, what I found when I was working this up. So with the singles and double posts, uh, double stitches that you use in the crochet, I was noticing that there's a slight drift as you're working a color work in the round that it's for me, it's slanting towards the left. I'm not sure how you're seeing it in the reverse. It might be slanting to your right, but it's drifting. Now, when I blocked it, I tried to correct that by reconfiguring the uh, the pinning of the fabric, but it looks like it wants to stay in that drift formation because when you're doing a stitch and you want to stack another stitch, it's different from knitting because you actually are working within that stitch. But with the post and then a the loop where you insert your your crochet hook into, it's a little bit towards the uh, like a P. It's towards the right or left. Well, in this instance, it's the left. So it is drifting. Is there a way of creating it so that it stacks? I'm not too sure whether I'm explaining myself properly. <clears throat> Perhaps if you work it. Um, the reverse and do the, no, that would be the same. So I don't know, but let me know what, what you, uh, what your thoughts are on that. I also want to show you the, the end and start of the round in the cow. Here it is here. I actually did an oopsie here where I didn't, uh, do the proper, I guess, join. And you can see a bit of color there. That's the, that's the way that I can find out whether where the end and the start of the round is by this little square here. But otherwise, it's pretty much hidden in all of these vertical stripes that go across the pattern work. So it's nicely hidden and you don't get to see it. Now on the inside, you'll see it because you see that I've carried the yarn up <clears throat> and that's the inside of it there where I'm carrying the yarn up along as each of the uh, circles of or rounds are completed and I'm moving up. So yeah, <clears throat> so that one was worked up with a hook size of a four millimeter and I did it again. I love the pattern so much. I wanted to see how it worked up in a worsted weight. So number four weight. And here it is here. So as you can tell, the squares are a little bit bigger. The hook size is a bit bigger too. I went up to a five millimeter for the worsted. And just as a comparison there, that's the three weight using a four millimeter. I used, uh, I believe it was 120 uh, chain in my initial chain. So I had uh, 12 of these blocks and I needed to add one extra to the chain so it was 121 so that I could do my um, my turn around and come back the other way yeah so that one worked up pretty much the same pretty much the same um, width so this was 121 to chain to begin with and then using that one to kind of like uh, that last chain to kind of like come back across the work. And it gave me 12. And this one, I believe I used 100, 140. So I have 14 of these holes uh, of the of the of the zeros going across the pattern. So, yeah. So let's try on the worsted weight one. Ah, 
Look at that. It has a great retro pattern to it. I, I just love it with these colors. And this one uses a gray as well as a rusty brown, orangey brown color, as well as a purpley and berry in, in inspired color way here. I love it. If anyone has seen that movie, The Shining, there's a scene where Danny, the small child, is tri uh, riding a tricycle down one of the corridors of the hotel. And the pattern on the carpet kind of reminds me of this pattern here. Now their colors in the carpet are kind of orangey, burnt orange, dark reds, but I love it. Love it, love it, love it. It's so cool. So what did I use? I'll take this off and we'll talk about the DK or three weight yarn that I used for this one. So in that I used a Caron Skinny Cake in the colorway Tartan and that went through all of these different colors, a deep orange, purple, it has a green in it and then orange up here like a bright orange, almost an ambery color. So those are the colors that it went through. Absolutely had fun using this yarn. I paired it with two greys that were solid greys. Now, the first one I ran out of the yarn and it is this kind of mid gray color and it is from Yarn Bee, their Sweet Divinity in the colorway gray cloud. Then this lighter yarn up here was this little bundle of joy now, this is from a Yambi collection as well called Pigment and Fiber. You buy them in a uh, five stack of donuts. And this was the light gray in the City Girl colorway. So that was that one. Absolutely love doing them. Now, this one here is a combination of... The berry colors, like blueberry purple, and then there's sort of a raspberry purple in there as well. Those were over dyed. I over dyed it on top of a yarn that I purchased from a tent sale back in 2019. And it was from the Peyton's Denimi collection. The original colorway was called Tangerine, and I over dyed it with these purples and these. Uh, like deep red colors, like a scarlet. Absolutely love that. And I paired it with what was left over from a Mandela Ombre, which is a Lion Brands, a Lion Brand yarn. And it was in the colorway called Cool. So all these different grays. So I used that up in this cowl as well. So these two cows are my entry into the Seta Calendar Cal 2022, and I'm celebrating Seta. Seta, I think you're an amazing person and a brilliant crocheter. So here's to Seta. So as promised, I wanted to show you the other mosaic style of crochet that I did, and it was to these two bucket bags. Now this is called the Mosaic Bucket Bag, and it's from Yarn and Chai. I did two of them. The mosaic crochet technique that I used in this one was called a spike stitch and uh, it was uh, quite different to the crochet mosaic stitch work that I did for the mosaic baby blanket in the cowl formation but each of them have their wonderful I guess qualities about them like this one is great for baskets and has a little bit more structure than the other one and I really enjoyed making that as well. So I just wanted to rehash some of the learns from a couple years back as well with mosaic, color, color mosaic crochet. Next up I have a finished item that I knitted and I reviewed this yarn about 10 days ago. I talked about it but now that I've used it I've got some extra things to let people know on what I found out about the yarn after using it. So here it is here, it is a cushion cover. I did want to use this particular yarn for decor and cushion covers. It is Lion Brands Super Bulky 6 in the collection called Wool Ease Roving. 
the colorway is mustard and this one up here is called pumpkin spice now i followed a pattern but then i actually had to change up the pattern a little bit only because i used different yarn size and needle size and it's in here it is a book called cozy pillows published by leisure arts and the pattern inside is called the imitation lattice so it called for a five bulky yarn i used a super bulky six and i used different needle size so i cast on the same amount of number of stitches as was called for in the pattern they requested in the pattern to make a front and a back panel and then seam them together this one was way longer because of the fact that i was using larger needles larger larger yarn so i decided to fold the whole lot of the fabric that i made to the back and just crochet up the side here and the bottom i picked up stitches along here because i used the whole complete bonus bundle for the mustard and i ran out and i had to do the flap here which was not part of the pattern and i chose the pumpkin spice picked up stitches did the garter stitch stitch and i did it for uh, four inches added buttons and that was my way of getting the pillow out so i just undo the buttons take the pillow out and then i can wash the cover so really really nice the way that i seamed it up was i took my crochet hook and two strands of a yarn called uh, from Briggs and Little. It's the Regal yarn and in the colorway Goldenrod. I took two strands of that, held it together and I crocheted one leg of the salvage row of stitches to the other salvage row stitch and then slipped the crochet uh, hook through like a, a, a slip stitch all the way around the corner, all the way down the bottom and it created a really nice seam. So quite a nice uh, color match there. Not precisely the same, but in the same family, maybe a little tone deeper. But what I've got to say about this wool ease is that it shedded a lot when I was working with it. So I had a lot of that fiber coming off onto my hands. Uh, it is not the best yarn if you're looking to have great st stitch definition and that fresh look all the way through because I think after washing it and after using it and having it rub against other fabrics or being used it's going to peel so it will show up little um, fluff balls and need a lot of gleaning so I would say if you want the fresh look uh, wash after wash or if you want something that's going to have great step in, step, stitch definition, then maybe this is not the yarn for you. The other thing that I noticed about the yarn was it had a very strong petroleum smell when I was working with it. It has gone now a little bit, but as I was using it from the ball, the fresh ball, it was smelling a lot like a petroleum smell. So maybe that's to do with the, the dye that they used or the type of uh, fibers uh, that they have within the acrylic base. It is wool, wool and acrylic, and so you I can expect there to be some sort of smell, but it was the str uh, strong a strong smell as it was being used by by me and coming out of the ball. So just to let you know what it looks like, here it is. Here that's the label. Wool ease roving. The bonus bundle gives you. 179 yards or 164 meters so it is 312 grams i used the whole mustard ball for that cushion cover it's like a 14 by 14 cushion and i used probably i'm gonna say 30 grams of the this colorway for the for the flap the needles that i used which were really, really nice to use with that yarn, were my Chagu, and this is 10 millimeter interchangeable set. And the length of it was uh, 29 inches uh, that fit that whole panel that I then folded. So that was a nice length to use. 
So next up are finished items. I've got two to show and share with you. One is knit and one is crochet. So here is the knitted one. It is almost, I'm gonna say three quarters done. So a little bit more to work on and all of the finessing to be done at the end as well. It is my sweater vest in cables. I had worked on this pattern when I first started knitting and I did some cables, a sweater vest cable, but it was way, way too big. Now, part of the learn, learning curve for me was that cables actually do grow. Uh, when you block them out, they, they expand. And it's partly because there's a little bit of uh, doing the yarning forward and backwards to do all of the recesses in, a, in the purl stitch. So you are jumping from knit to purl. So it does stretch quite a lot. And <laughs> the number of stitch count and needle size that I used for the original one, I had created this wonderful tent of, I'm gonna say four, four plus positive ease in the whole structure of the, of the vest. So now what I'm doing is I'm learning from my mistakes and I'm doing it a little smaller, like this has got no ease in it right, whatsoever now but when I block it it's going to have like an inch or two so it'll be a lot nicer to wear more form fitted I am at the part where I've separated for sleeves or not in this case it won't be sleeves it'll just be a little bit of a uh, ribbing that I'm doing for the sleeves and I'm probably what three inches up on the back I have yet then to do the front where I'll be separating to do the V-neck uh, and then doing each side of the of the front chest piece. And then I'm going to try something new to me is the three needle bind off. I don't know, <laughs> I've never done it before, but that's the way I'm gonna try and do the uh, shoulders to do the three needle bind off. Um, yeah, so the yarn that I'm using, I'm using a Beautiful yarn that was gifted to me by Crystal over at Bagger Day. Hi, Crystal. And she <clears throat> sent me, because she knows I love Noro. So she sent me uh, three hanks of Noro Kiri in the colorway. I believe the, uh, the colorway is being called Dark Teal. And the number of the color is 22. So that's the Noro Kiri, all the information. So I have enough to do the sweater vest and maybe a little bit extra. I'm also adding in with it these, two, these minis here in this colorway called, I think it's called Pearlescence from Knit Picks. And I got this color in a mini set that I purchased and the mini set I think was called green evergreen or something like that so these are the two that I'm using in the same pearlescent colorway and I'm doing my striping around the neck the, the waistband and the arms I've held something with the Noro Kiri and these are two yarns that I over dyed and well that's attached so I I'm adding in with it this color here for the probably half of the body a little bit more than half the body and then I blended and now at the top I'm going to be using that so I can force a little bit of a gradient happening between the two colors and create some interest with the with the um, color work. Now I'll show you the back because it shows a bit better in the back. That's the slightly more bluish uh, blended yarn, uh, yarn that I, I over dyed. And then this is more of the, the emeraldy color. So it's going from an emeraldy green into more of a, a deeper teal, but ever so slightly, because those are the colors that are running in the yarn to begin with anyway there's the kind of like an emeraldy green and then more of a teal green 
So I'm enhancing those colors and forcing it to do a little bit of a blend all the way through. Um, I love it. I love it. They're all, this one here is considered a, I think it's considered a sport weight yarn. Yeah, a two. So this is considered a sport weight yarn and I'm holding the other fuzzy yarn with it, which is probably making it more of a DK yarn. And I'm using my knitting needles are a four millimeter. This is Chaku Bamboo and they're fixed. And it is, a, I think it's a 40 inch, it's 40 inches. My idea on blocking this, because people have been asking me about how do I block my work? Some, some, all different ways. Sometimes I lay it flat and I don't pin anything. Other times I will uh, scooch, like if it's a tube or something, I'll scooch it around something so it forces it to a certain size. Like with the sweater vest that I'm going to be doing, I have foam where I will, this is the measurement between here and here and going around. So it's 22 uh, in width and going around makes it 44. And I'll just slip it on. If I want to then do some pinning, I can pin the, like if I do a little ribbing for the shoulder or the neck, I can pin it down where I want those things to, to, um, to fall. And that's the way I dry it. So it's got a multi-purpose of um, being pinned as well as stretching it out on its own. So as I don't need too much shaping because it's only a, an, an inch or two of ease that I'm uh, forcing the shape of the, the garment, I don't mind if it lays flat on my body because it won't uh, accentuate any of the curves that I don't want showing up. It'll be a nice kind of like straight drop. And that's what I'm going for for the, the vest. Next up is a crochet blanket that I'm working on. I started a couple nights back, maybe four nights ago. And I'm, it's a new to me stitch called the rice stitch. And I absolutely love it. I'll link the video tutorial that I followed if I can find it down in the description box. Now, as I, as I look at the size, it's probably slightly an oversized lapgan. And I've got a place in the house where I want to keep this. It's to an ottoman in the bedroom. So if I'm reading by the um, window in the bedroom, I can snuggle up to this or lay this on me if I'm feeling a bit chilly. So really nice, lovely stitch. I'm using a six millimeter crochet hook and all the yarn that I'm using in here is four weight, but I'm holding it with either a sport weight or fingering to get a nice little color, splotches of color happening. Now the choices that I've made are slightly variegated sport weight yarn or fingering weight yarn to get that speckle happening. So lovely and drapey with that extra big hook size that I'm using for the four weight. And what I've got down here is a yarn. I used up most of the ball. It is the Loops and Threads Eco Waves collection. And this one is the multi collection. So it's kind of a roving style yarn, specialty yarn, it goes from a two weight and then boucles up to more of a four weight yarn or even five with the fuzz. Really like the way it uh, worked up, very, very soft. It's kind of like homespun, but I would say it's it's softer than homespun and has more variation in the weight changes. So this color is called Grassy Fields in the Multi Collection. I held a another yarn with, with it and it was a gray sport, sport weight yarn. And it was from Yarn Art, which I purchased from hobiumyarns.com. And the collection is called Pacific. Now I don't have the ball band because it was leftover gray that I had used in another project. So I can't tell you what the colorway was. Then I move up into this gray section here, which is a Caron cake in the cloud. I think it's called cloud cake. Yeah, it's cloud cake. This is the one that is the gray called graphite. Now that's considered a four weight as well, super, super soft. So this is a very luxurious blanket for softness. I'm holding with it 
the yarn art in this colorway. It's uh, color 309, so that's the same yarn art that I used in the gray, but a different color. So 309, holding with the gray. And then this one up here is the, going back to the loops and threads variety of the Eco Waves, and it's in the colorway red. That's it there. This is how much I have left to go in the ball, so I'll just keep going. Now, holding with the red Eco Waves, I'm using a couple of different fingering and sport weight yarns. The one here that I finished is called Willow Stream, and it's in the colorway Pomegranate. So that was used in the first part of the ball, but I only had a little bit of that left. So I've moved now into holding it with Premier Wool Free Sock Stripes. This one here. And this is in the colorway name. Did they give me a name? Ooh. Yeah, it's called Farm, Farm Stand. And I really like how it's sort of playing out all the different patches of different colors that come through, giving it more of an antique look and more of a rustic feel than just having it the plain red. So yeah, that's that. So I've got a number of different yarns and ideas that I'm gonna work through. I'm gonna bracket off all of the colors that I go through with the gray and a like a sport weight or a fingering variegated yarn in the gray cloud. And I'll bracket off each of the color blocks with the gray. So that will repeat through the blanket. And I've got a number of colors here that I'm going to go through using the same either Eco Waves Multi or Eco Waves. And this is one of the colors here called, what is this one called? It is called Red Cream. This one is called Light Gray Pastel. This one here is called Black White. And this one here is called, I think it's called Grace Sea Gray. So a number of things to get through with that one. I'm hoping that it's going to get to around maybe six feet long. And that will be an oversized great item to have in the bedroom. Next up is Happy Mail. And some of these things that you're going to be seeing are... Christmas cards or holiday greetings, gifts that were meant to be for Christmas, but they've just arrived to me because of the backlog of the post. Now, I think it's a worldwide thing that uh, the post is just catching up to itself right now at the start of the year. And these gifts have been slowly coming in and I just want to showcase it. I want to show my gratitude for receiving these beautiful items, these beautiful words, cards, and just to know that it's never needed to send me anything, but I do treasure them and it does make me super happy. So I'll start it off with this beautiful card here from Judy. Now, Judy has a YouTube channel called Crochet Every Day with Judy. Hi, Judy. And she sent me this wonderful card. I've read it. I won't read it here on camera, but look at that wonderful photograph. This photograph was taken, I believe, by her husband, Philip Al Weston. Now, I won't show the back of the details because it's got a phone number and an address. I don't know whether that's um, a private address and phone number. But if you're interested in looking for some photographs, uh, it is Western Photographic Services that you can potentially Google. And the photographer's name is Philip L. Weston. And on the cover here, it is Loretto Chapel. Now, that might be a chapel that's around... Uh, Judy's area and she's in New uh, New Mexico. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. I love it so much. Thank you, Judy. That is so sweet. And I hope that you and your family have a great 2022 as well. The next thing that I want to show is a parcel that arrived or a package that arrived from our Emmy Phillips. Hi, Emmy. This is the parcel because Emmy's such a colorful and vibrant person. I need to show you how it came. 
in this wonderfully star encrusted lovely package here bubble wrap I have received a card that's the card there I won't I have read it but I won't read it here on the uh, video it does talk about Yarn Chicken, which is a company that she's found online and she sent me some amazing things. So where is that little sticker that I had? Here it is. <laughs> Does that not embellish Yarn Chicken in a literal sense? I love it. It's like a pictorial wordplay on the company. And I'm going to stick that somewhere. It's a sticker where I can see it. I have been playing Yarn Chicken recently too with that pillowcase cover that I just used with the bulky, super bulky yarn. Inside of which as well, we have a couple of little packages that have uh, trinkets or useful tags in them or labels. And this one here has a pendant with uh, Yarn Chicken, their logo. I love how they've packed it up with, oh, look how much was left when I was playing Yarn Chicken. It's quite a token of like reward there and this one here is little leather strap labels that uh, wrap around the rim of beanies or hats I love that idea I've never used them before but I'm gonna put them on and it says made by urban yarn it has all of the press studs in there as well so that it clasps onto the onto the fabric nice and firmly again with the little scraps of yarn absolutely love that also in there was some tea called blueberry superfruit from stash an antioxidant lovely for me to try out at night time because i do like drinking tea at night and i got yarn in this little meshy bag let's take a look at what i got i got oh they're nice and soft so B Woolen DK is this one here. It is 114 grams, which gives me 280 yards. It's 100% superwash merino wool. And it says here, Artisan dyed exclusively for B Woolen. Now the colorway, I love the colorway name on this one. It is called Old Man Pants, <laughs> very appropriately named. And it is saying here to use a US five to seven millimeter, uh, five to seven uh, set of knitting needles, which I believe might be a maybe a 3.75 to a four millimeter set of knitting needles. Hand wash is recommended and lay flat to dry. Love that. There's the web address should you like to take a look at the woolen. Now, this might be an accompanying yarn to the old man pants. They do work well together. I'm not sure what I, whether I'd use them together, but they're super, super soft. And there's some sort of fiber that's hanging on to me. This is a Cascade 220 Superwash Sport Weight. So it's a number two. And it is saying here it's 50 grams. I get 136 yards, 125 meters. And it is made in China for Cascade, which is a Seattle, Washington company. The color number, because Cascade does not put color names on their labels, is 813. And they're suggesting here you can machine wash. And I'm not too sure what that circle with two dots is. Maybe lay flat to dry. And what else can I tell you? What kind of yarn is it? It is 100% superwash merino. It's a nice electric color. I love that. Um, do they have a needle suggestion or hook suggestion? No. Nope. Oh, yes, they do. 3.75 millimeter to 4 millimeter set of knitting needles, but no crochet hook suggestion. So I would say probably a 4, a four millimeter crochet hook would work nicely with this yarn. Really, really soft. No undergarments required. Thank you so much for that, Emmy. That is super sweet. Now, the acquisition that I purchased was from Seta. Now, she arranged, she didn't have to, for us 
to purchase the calendar and it must have taken a lot of effort to get these printed and posted so I do appreciate this setup but I did get the set of cow calendar sorry the cow the calendar and I won't be showing it because it's set as baby I just wanted to know that I am loving the calendar and it's really really cool so in that I also received synonymous with setter is true lemon I've never tried these but I I see Seta drinking this quite often with her, uh, I think it's Sip and Tea Day segment in her podcasts, and I get to try them for myself. So I got Lady Grey in uh, the Twinings variety, and I got uh, Sonitor's Himalsha. Oh, I think I'm reading it. That's not, that might be a different, that's a different language. Himalsha. Chris Gingle Tea. I don't know what that... Is that German? I don't know. It's called Heavenly Christmas Delight on the back here. So, can't wait to try these. Thank you so much, Seta. Appreciate them. Now I'm going to be starting a new segment and trying it out for 2022, and I'd love to get your feedback on it. It is opening up a project bag that I've bundled some yarn and selected some yarn for and because people have been asking me how do I choose colors and what do I do when I'm choosing a pattern to go with those colors so hopefully these little segments of me unboxing or un unopening a, a bag of my projects for 2022 I can talk about some of the things and get your opinions as well as feedback so the pattern that I'm looking at to try out for 2022 maybe later down the way is West Knits, Best Knits. It's published in this uh, book and it actually is the featured cover pattern here called Exploration Station. Now, without giving the pattern away, because it is a paid for pattern, this is another photograph that Stephen West has in, has in his publication on the, the make. It has a number of different um, things that I'm I'm interested in trying out their uh, little eyelets. There's garter stitch. There looks to be a brioche in there without looking at the pattern too much. I can't really tell, but uh, this is also in a different colorway. So really nice. And I've chosen, I've pulled two different sets of yarns. And it is fingering weight, I believe. And I have chosen these yarns here. So I've got a gray from Knit Picks. I've got this, which is LBS. And this is what I received from a mystery bag that I got from Reggie. Hi, Reggie. And Reggie has a channel called J-Hook Crochet here on YouTube. And I absolutely love the colors. So I'm pulling most of my color selection from this variegated yarn here called Silo. I think it's called Silo. New York Silo. I love the dyer of this yarn. So um, I've pulled out a gray and I've pulled out some brown and some gold, like honey color. And that will be part of the cho yarn choices that I'm making for uh, the exploration station. So that's one. The reason why I chose that was all based on a yarn that I liked. So I look at a yarn and I think it's variegated. I'm going to pull some colors so that there's some unity within the yarn. So I chose the gray, which is kind of like meshes well with everything. And then this honey brown and also this more rustic brown. So I'm finding that if they pull from the colors or a strengthened color with inside of a variegated that they relate nicely. Also with the uh, yarn that it calls for in the pattern, you need to have some contrast. So there needs to be a darker color as well as the lighter tones so that you can get those uh, wedgy shapes being really well defined. Now that's a preference of choice uh, that I see in both the styles and color choices that Stephen West has put in his book. So I'm kind of following suit to get the best um, 
I guess, bang for your buck in the in the pattern and the design work. But you could do something a little bit more neutral. You could do something a little bit more muted as well. Uh, but those are sample one of the of the yarn that I pulled for that pattern. The second one here in oh by the way, this bag here was also provided by Emmy Phillips. I love this bag so much. It is called, uh, the designer is Erin Lane. And here it says here, I rescue yarn. I'm kind of a hero. <laughs> I love it. And this one here that I'm I'm housing my yarn choice, second yarn choice in for that pattern is the ABBA bag that came from Judy over at Witch Peace Crafts. And she has a YouTube channel too. I'll link down below. Hi, Judy. So the second choice that I have is a little different. Again, it is from a variegated yarn here and I'm pulling colors as well. This yarn was generously gifted to me by Kerry Penny and she's the happy crafty homemaker. I'll link her down below as well. So I am choosing this yarn to pull colors from and I do have to recall or remember that there needs to be a dark and a light so that I can get the full contrast of those wedge shapes that are happening within the pattern. So this is a color that is um, complementary to what's going through here. This is my darker bang for my buck kind of sculpting with the wedge, the wedge edges with the wedge edges. And then I have another one here which has the uh, vibrancy to it that could uh, also relate to that middle yarn. So those are the three more cooler yarn choices for a very cool, breezy looking colorway. Whereas the other one is more honey and warm. Uh, so there are two different uh, styles in the color choices on the color wheel. So a warmer one and then a cooler one. So out of curiosity, I'm just interested to know if you were going to knit up that pattern, which one would you go for? The more cooler or the more warmer? Now it's come time in the podcast to talk about what me and my husband have been up to in this new to us community and all the adventures that we've been having over the last couple of weeks since my last update. And if you were just here for the fiber content that I've left for you up front and you've watched this far into the podcast, I want to say thank you. And if you want to get on with your important stuff during the day, I'll catch you up in the next video. And for anyone who is wanting to stick around and listen to all of the, I guess, adventures that we've been up to, please do. So what have we been up to in our community? Hubby and I have been finding new hikes. So we have one which is called the Ruth Master Greenway. And that is a lovely little walk along a river and it comes around, loops around. I absolutely had a lot of fun walking that trail. And we also found a, tra a trail on Alk Falls, which is a lovely waterfall. I have got some clips that I want to share with you. And they have this breathtaking little bit of a suspension bridge with a meshy type um, iron work that you can see through the bottom of the valley where the water is rushing down below you. So quite a thrilling experience. I got some clips of that as well. So just to let you know, if you're afraid of heights, that you're safe <laughs> on the other side of the screen, you're not on the bridge yourself, but take a look at these. I absolutely loved that walk.
As you can tell by the footage, we had just had a good dump of, of snow and it has since been raining for about four days straight. The weather has warmed up a bit and a lot of the the ice and the snow have, has melted away. So now we can um, go for walks and we don't have to slug around uh, uh, risky icy patches or in a uh, foot of snow. So the footage did show at Alp Falls that it, there was a lot of snow still there. And we found a wonderful, wonderful little pie store and it's called Just Like Mum's Pies. It is this little shack on the side of the lower highway and I believe it's somewhere between, I'm going to um, pick the uh, places like Union Bay or Roy Royston where they have their little uh, shop situated. It is on their private property with signage so you can drive into their driveway and Chad and I were like going in there, there was like a, a people who are coming out of the little shed they had just put, purchased something or had looked for something. So we thought we'd wait our turn uh, with all of the restrictions on <laughs> close confinements and such. So we dawned on our mask. We went into the little shack uh, after the people had left and we were like looking around. There was a fridge full of different types of pies. That's meat pies and fruit pies. And we saw that there were other baked goods, cookies. And I was like, oh my goodness, Chad, do you have any cash on you? And he's like, no, I don't. I said, well, I don't know how we're going to buy anything. And little did we know there was someone who was uh, watching a camera of the shed and could tell that we were talking about like how to purchase these items. So a voice came on the speaker and said, you can come up to the house and we have square. You can tap whatever items that you want to purchase and just let me know. So we're like, oh my goodness, where did that come from? So we kind of like thought we'd wave to a uh, undisclosed camera we couldn't see. <laughs> and we ended up buying a peach pie. So I was like, holy smokes, what is up with us right now? Because we, we bought a Costco pie, a fruit pie, and we had like a pumpkin pie for like the fall season. And now we're want, we're like pie crazy right now. Wasn't there a character, maybe Agent Cooper? Was it Agent Cooper from Twin Peaks who always talked about pie? Now that's some pie. The Mum's, just like Mum's Pie Store, was the best pie. Holy smokes, the crust was beautifully layered and it had like a little bit of a phyllo buttery kind of shortbread but also had layers as well like phyllo style pastry just delicious so i've got a clip of the little shack and i want to show that here now so you can tell by that clip that the little hut that was outside of their property was quite small. And don't be fooled, there was so much baked goods in there. It was a haven of delight. There were cookies, there were different types of pies. But I have a question for you. If you had your choice of going into a pie shack like that and choosing a type of pie, it could be savory, like a meat pie, or it could be a fruit pie. What kind of pie would you choose? We absolutely loved the peach pie. That was probably our favorite that we chose on the day, but we wanna go back and try all the different other styles of pies. So I'm interested to know what your type of pie would be. <laughs> Bit of fun. Uh, what else did we get up to? So in the course of the last two weeks, uh, we haven't, we haven't branched out and gone to far distances. We didn't go to, back to the mainland. We've been at home. Uh, two, three contracts for me on a personal like business level uh, have started up again. So February is going to be super busy and I will have three contracts to get through until March. I do have something of interest happening on an interview today, uh, which is just 
uh, over two hours away, I will be sitting down talking to some people and that may impact a little bit of my 2022. It's uh, me deciding on uh, making a change in business. So I will probably relinquish more of that when it happens because I don't believe in speaking about things until they eventuate. A lot of times it's uh, weighing up options and sometimes, you know, finding out new material that makes you change your mind. So I'm not going to mention anything until later down the way about that uh, business proposal. And yeah, so I think that catches you up on everything. Um, I hope that everyone's doing well and staying safe. I know that I have some things in my book that I want to catch you up on with movies that we've been watching, but because it's already run a little bit longer with the new segment that I've added in called the unveiled or oh, unbagging of a project bag. And I, uh, I want to keep this nice and short. So I will catch you up in the next video. Bye for now.